The Loke name has been synonymous with time-honoured English craftsmanship and fine handmade shoes for five generations and over 125 years. The tradition began in 1880 when brothers Thomas, John and William Loke opened a factory in Northamptonshire in the heart of the English shoemaking industry. The aim was to provide the most handsome, comfortable and durable gentleman's shoes possible. Today, Loke continues to be family owned and to pride itself on the attention to detail required to create outstanding quality footwear. Having celebrated its 125th anniversary, Loke remains passionate about maintaining the exceptional quality that only traditional skills and family heritage can achieve. Loke is most famous for its traditional Goodyear welted shoe. These are still made in England and grace the feet of an increasingly diverse range of devotees, from loyal Loke customers to style leaders. Over 200 operations go into making a welted shoe. The shoemaking process begins with the leather, which is checked for suitability before cutting. The various outside components are then cut out of the leather, utilizing the leather to the best means. Fabric materials are multi-cut. Boots are blocked to form the shape in the front part of the shoe. For extra comfort, the components are skived to thin the edges where other pieces are attached. On brogue shoes, a decorative punch is made. Where appropriate, backers are ironed on and some edges are folded over. The linings are fitted to the outside with minimal water-based adhesive. Various machines such as flatbed are used to attach the parts. Post machines are used to get shape into the upper. Sometimes the uppers are stitched together, trimming away the lining material. Eyelets are inserted on laced shoes and toe puffs are attached to hold the shape of the toe cap. Components for the bottom of the shoe are made using leathers of a firmer tannage. Heels, soles and insoles are all cut from various leathers. Next, the upright rib to which the welt is later attached is stuck to the insole. The pieces of leather, known as lifts, are assembled and then compressed under heavy pressure. Metal slugs are inserted into the heel for decoration and additional wear. The back of the upper is moulded over heated elements to create the right shape. The upper is drafted over the last and temporarily stuck to the upright rib, 
then drafted at the sides, stapled and placed into the heat setter. Nails are driven into the seat of the shoe, then surplus upper material is trimmed away before the welt is sewn in. Inseam trimming completes the process of cutting away all surplus material. The welt is trimmed and flattened prior to the fitting of a support shank, seat piece and natural cork bottom filling. The bottom is temporarily attached to the sole, then the back part is trimmed and nailed. At rough rounding, where the shape of the shoe is imparted, a channel for sewing the sole on is also cut. The sole is then stitched to the welt. In some cases, the special stitching machine hides the stitch on the welt in a specially cut channel, and decorative indent is added to decorate the welt. Some leathers are protected by a plastic cover. The bottom of the shoe is rolled under heavy pressure to ensure a correct shape for the wearer. Heels are securely attached by nailing from the inside of the shoe. Surplus material is then rough trimmed from the heel before the first of several scouring processes takes place, each one using a progressively finer emery cloth. The fine job in edge decoration is achieved by special profile cutters. The edges are then inked and wax is driven by a hot iron into the heel and edges for the protection of the shoe. The sole of the shoe is scoured with a fine emery paper to enable an attractive bottom finish to be applied. Wax is applied to the brushes and then the bottom of the shoe is polished. Decorative wheel marks are ironed into the sole and, for a final finish, the edge and heel are polished. Some shoes are burnished. The sole is branded and seat socks are inserted. A variety of antique polishes take place, followed by the shoe's final polish. Shoes have laces attached and are then boxed. 